Hello, this is Arson Cash Cashia and the head buyer here at the Boulder Bookstore and I've got some books that I want to talk to you about today. So the first couple books I'm going to talk about are sale books and sale books are books that we're able to get for reduced prices for whatever reason. Sometimes the paperback is out and they want to sell the hardback at reduced prices. Sometimes they just printed too many hardbacks. Who knows? But anyway, we um, have a few new sale books in that I wanted to bring people's attention to. I work really hard to bring us high quality sale books that people will enjoy in Boulder. These are not the dregs. These are great, great books that end up on the sale table. And so I'm going to talk about two of them today. The first one is What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Blacker in the Memoir and Essays by Damon Young. Uh, a lot of these essays are humorous about growing up black in America and what it means and how difficult it can be. Uh, Young has a great sense of humor, but underneath that humor is some real hard things, like watching his Pittsburgh neighborhood turn into what he called Portlandia with pierogies as it got gentrified. Um, he believes, he talks about in one of these essays, that if his mother had been a white woman that she'd still be alive. That uh, life and death plays out differently in the white and black communities in America. So as we're talking about so many of these issues that are going on in America today, this is a great kind of look at one person's experience and how it plays out, uh, how these issues play out in one person's life. So Damon Young. The other sale book I want to bring your attention to is Trust Exercise by Susan Choi. This won the National Book Award uh, last year for fiction. It's one of the top few novels that came out in 2019 and we're lucky enough now that it's in paperback to grab some hardbacks on sale and so this is a book uh, which starts out being about two high school kids two a, a boy and a girl freshmen and they're in kind of a drama class and they kind of fall in love and their teacher somehow manipulates their relationship and you don't quite understand the full extent of what happens till the narrative fast forwards to when they're adults and all these things that you thought in the first part of the book about how things were working with their friend group and this teacher, you start seeing from a different angle and a different lens. And it's a very powerful book. So I would highly recommend Trust Exercise by Susan Choi. She's a great writer. So recently I took a trip to South Fork, Colorado just to get away. And we stayed in this beautiful uh, house on the hillside overlooking some mountains and a valley. And every day when I would get up, I'd go outside and I'd look and there'd be all these amazing birds flying around. And so I really took to watching the birds and it was wonderful. So then this past weekend, I went up to the National Park on a hike and we saw some more birds. And so I've been kind of getting into birds a little bit more. And so David Sibley, who most of you might know, many of you might know from the Sibley's Guides, these great birding books, has a new book out called What It's Like to Be a Bird. So the main thing I want to know is about flying, like what's it like to fly, but he gives you all different aspects of what it's like. My favorite part of the book are these beautiful drawings he has uh, in here. Here's a drawing of a woodpecker, which we actually saw on Allen's Park. Uh, not this exact woodpecker, this is just a drawing, but we saw a woodpecker pecking away and it was really beautiful to see. And I had no idea, I don't know if you can see it, this blue line here represents the woodpecker's tongue. But in the end, I didn't really want to be a woodpecker because they're pounding into trees to try to eat like bugs, and I didn't think that would be a great diet for me. Another bird we saw was we saw a wild turkey on that trip. So turkeys are always very interesting, and you know I feel like I saw a lot more wild turkeys when I was growing up in Pennsylvania than I do here, but they are in Colorado. Finally, I struck upon the kind of bird that I would like to be. And maybe it's because I am short and stout that I am drawn to being a bird like a heron, which is not short and stout, long and graceful. But the main reason I would like to be a heron is because they eat fish and raw fish. And I love sushi much more than I like bugs. So I've decided I want to be a heron. So that's David Sibley, What It's Like to Be a Bird. It's a beautiful book, gift book, but just a fun book to page through. It would be good for kids too. I'd say middle school kids could really get a lot out of this book as well. On that trip to South Fork, we spent a lot of time looking at the sky. In the evening, we could just walk out of the house we were staying in down to the road and it was 
perfectly black, this the night sky, and it would we could see uh, Jupiter, we could see um, the moon wasn't out yet. We could see all the stars, the Milky Way, the cloud on the Milky Way was there. It was really beautiful. So this book is called The Sirens of Mars: Searching for Life in Another World, and Sarah Stewart Johnson is the writer. And so it's mostly about her work as uh, in astronomy right now, where she's one of the people looking for life on Mars, studying the data that they're getting back from these rovers or these uh, satellites that circle Mars. But also in this book is her autobiography of why she is so interested in the stars and growing up and going with her father and looking at the night sky. And so I was with my daughter on this trip, and so this book struck a chord with me about how these things you do when you're a kid can stay with you your, your whole life, these, these moments. And so she's turned it into a career. It's a fascinating book. And um, she seems fairly optimistic that we are going to find something on Mars, some life of some kind, so we'll find out. The last two books I have to talk about are novels. One is Ant Kind by Charlie Kaufman. Now you might know him from his films. He did Being John Malkovich. He did Adaptation. He did Eternal Sunshine on a Spotless Mind, I believe is what it is. Yes. And so anyway, he's a... He's well known for these very kind of interesting, creative, quirky screenplays and uh, as a director. So this is his first novel. It's 700 pages. And I thought it was pretty funny because the lead character is a film critic, which of course must be your bugaboo if you're a filmmaker. But this film critic has seen this movie that this it was a lifetime project of the director. And it's like a three month long movie or something. It's, it's crazy. And he wants to bring it to the world. He thinks it will make his reputation as a film critic and in the film world. But the film has disappeared. And all that's left of it is one frame and his memory of this film. So he wants to try to bring it out with just that. So I'm sure people who enjoy Kaufman and you thought, God, I wish being with John Malkovich never ended. Well, 700 pages, it almost never does end. The last book I want to talk about is... The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, I was lucky enough to, to interview Stephen for this book. Uh, he's a Native American who lives here in Boulder, teaches at CU, and he writes horror novels. And this is a great book. You know, this is uh, the, the, the person who's creating the horror is not really a person. It's a kind of a monster. It's an elk woman. And he's playing on things like antelope women and deer women. Uh, these myths that have circled in the community. He does such a great job, I think, though, of bringing the contemporary American Indian experience alive, where they make a sweat lodge at one point in this book out of old sleeping bags and coats and things. And it's very interesting because he, and in the interview, he talked about how you, you can't be frozen in 1800, you know, for, these, for that community to survive and to, to thrive, and you have to make it your own. And we see that in here, but we also get a great page-turning horror novel. So I would highly recommend this. He's on the KGNU Boulder Bookstore Radio Book Club show that will have aired the day before that this airs. But we'll have the link for that show that you can click on and hear Stephen talk about this book. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. And um, I hope everybody's being safe and well.